back, this is Brendan, Views on Brews, as another, uh, another segment of my How to Brew tutorial on, specifically on the fermentation fridge that I've got behind me, which is a fridge that I acquired from Facebook uh, for free. Ask around, plenty of people are trying to get rid of fridges that are taking up space in their house. Uh, absolutely no need to go ahead and buy one, but if you do, make sure you've got the right dimensions inside. Uh, this one came free, I just had to get the trailer for one day and put it on the back of the car and bring it here. Um, so, cool thing about fermentation fridge is it, it's the, probably the single biggest improvement any home brewer can make to their, their home brewing, um, the, home, the quality of the home brew that they make. Uh, so this, this fridge here has improved my beer exponentially so. So if you haven't got one and you're brewing uh, at home and you're just putting your bucket in the cupboard, totally fine, nothing wrong with that. But if you want to improve your beer significantly, get a fridge and uh, make it the number one priority would be my uh, suggestion. But I didn't start out with a fridge for a year and a half, so take your time, get your rig together and uh, well, let's have a look inside the fridge and see what I've got going on. Okay, so inside the fridge is my fermentation bucket, which I've just uh, manufactured a way of making it work for me. Um, uh, some of you might need to take out some of these sections. Maybe your um, maybe your shelf is too high, too low, but I can just about fit the bubbler in there with mine. So that's an important thing when you are picking up a fridge. It's probably one of those things that stops people um, getting a fermentation fridge, but. Usually, most, most buckets will fit in uh, any decent sized fridge where you can take out the shelves and a couple of the, uh, the shelves on the door cabinet as well. Uh, inside my particular setup, and yours might be different, um, and if you're thinking of doing it differently, it's totally up to you. Maybe you have a, a heat pad underneath, maybe you have a brew belt outside, but I, I opted for the uh, Lectrim, which is, um, uh, it heats my, it's a glass tube inside with uh, an element in it that heats up the, uh, the beer while it's fermenting to exactly the right temperature. And my ink bird, which I'll show you in a second, is the Thermowell thermometer, which cuts out that Electrim and um, brings it back in as, as needed by my uh, temperature setting, which for this particular bit, an extra special bitter, uh, is uh, set at 20 degrees Celsius exactly. I have a plus or minus of 0.3 on that. But I know that from the second that I put this beer in this fridge, um, one hour later it was at 20 degrees and it has not changed since. So the great thing about that is it gives you the opportunity to know if you are responsible for um, incorrectly fermenting your beer. So if you are, for instance, storing your beer in a warm room or a cold room that changes temperature throughout the day, and you notice there are flavors, uh, und undesirable flavors in your beer, and you can't really be sure what it is, by having a fermentation fridge and fermentation control inside it, you can uh, be sure that you're at least fermenting at the correct temperature. If the temperature of your beer in the first 72 hours rises above 22 degrees Celsius, you're probably going to get off flavors in the beer, um, higher alcohols, fusel alcohols, and th just things that make your beer taste um, a little bit not right. Uh, not necessarily um, contaminated or anything like that, but just um, fermenting the beer outside of the correct temperature zone for that yeast. Uh, I'm using London ESB yeast from Downstar and the correct temperature for that yeast range in fermentation is between 18 and 22 Celsius. So I went with 20 uh, right in the middle. Um, it's uh, The yeast itself is uh, between 65 and 75% attenuation and I reckon I've reached about 70% attenuation in my beer. Uh, I've ended up a, a couple of gravity points short of the predicted final gravity of 1015. This has been in the fridge, by the way, for 13 days. So my plan now is to take it out tonight, leave it overnight in the kitchen, and then tomorrow, once the yeast has had a chance to settle back down, 
after me taking it out of the fridge, it needs to get a chance to settle back down on the counter where I'm going to use a gravity fed system to um, put the beer um, through my auto siphon into my uh, secondary fermentation bucket for batch priming with my sugar solution. And that's the way it goes. So I think what I'll do now, um, no, actually I'll show you this. Uh, these are bungs that I just picked up in the homebrew store. Perfectly fits the Thermo Well. Thermo Well um, is an ink bird and it goes right down here. So the probe is about 10 inches long, which is really great because it sits right in the center of my beer. So I know exactly how warm my beer is right in the right in the center of the beer which is really perfect for me and this is um, this also goes uh, down the exact same distance uh, about 10 inches 8 to 10 inches and it heats up the beer but I find that um, if you have a heat pad underneath you'll warm it up a little bit more the base of the beer and if you have a heat belt around the side um, you're warming up the outside of the beer rather than the inside letting the warmth uh, dilute itself out through the beer. But anyway, either way, it doesn't matter. And um, this is just my setup. Set up. Uh, let's have a look at the ink bird. Okay, so here is my setup. Apologies for the, the messy looking uh, camera frame. Um, I'm just gonna lean in here and pick it up. Uh, so you can see that my beer is currently fermenting at 19.8 celsius because i've just picked it up it's changed um and it's set at 20 degrees celsius here um but uh yeah it's actually heating my beer now it's gone down to 19.6 and that's probably just because i opened the fridge actually which is incredible really that i've got that much control that i can get it to be within 0.1 of a celsius so my heating has now kicked in uh, so the electrum inside the fridge is now turned on and it's gonna do that until it stabilizes the beer to within 0.3 celsius of one degree so you can see by adding fermentation control into your into your uh, home brewing uh, repertoire you're basically fermenting precisely and really fermenting is all the brewer does uh, you prepare your yeast and you prepare your wort and you add them together and you ferment them uh, so fermentation is where all the magic happens and this thing here has improved my brewing um, a thousand percent if uh, let's just say a hundred percent Okay, so uh, yeah, I've got the fridge um, plugged into it here and I've got my Electrium heater plugged into it here but you could have a heat belt or a heat pad plugged in here and that's it and I set it to what I want and off we go. Okay, so I've just zoomed in a bit and taken a camera shot here just to show you the top of my fermenter. Uh, the reason I want to show you is because the bubbler, you can't see it here, but it's completely inactive and it's been that way for about seven days. The yeast I'm using is Danstar ESB, uh, London ESB yeast, and it finished up ages ago. But um, the important thing to note is that the right hand side of the bubbler is being pushed down by the carbonation of the uh, beer. So the beer is still under pressure, which is exactly the way I want it. This lets me know that there's a good layer of carbonation. You can actually see the lid is slightly bulging. So there is plenty of carbonation, uh, CO2 in the in the actual fermenter itself and that's actually protecting my beer from oxidation um, people that are attempted to open up the uh, fermenter look inside the lid what they're actually doing is allowing some of that co2 to escape so while you'll definitely need to take um, gravity readings you really only need to do it um, twice maximum and once you get good at brewing you can just do it once and know that uh, you know if you've left it two weeks you're going to get a good gravity reading of a finished beer and uh, on the day that you intend to bottle the beer you can take another gravity reading but that just takes a bit of experience uh, but try not to open it more than two times maximum because uh, that CO2 is actually keeping your beer 
uh, from uh, degrading via oxidation.